1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 23. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto beth Aven. So Jonathan got victory through the Lord, and the men of Israel were distressed that day. The reason, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, Now go to verse 27. But Jonathan heard not what his father charged the people with the oath. That's what adjured is, it's an oath. So Saul makes his oath to the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food unto even. Why? They just fought a hard battle hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Philistines killing each other. Who knows when the last time they had a meal? And we don't know what time it is. He says until even 6 p.m. Well, whatever time it is to 6 p.m. tonight, no food. And anybody that has food, I curse them. Now that, you know, today in America, curse, you know, that has no thought to it. But being cursed among Israel, it's trouble. To eat us any food until even that I may, look at that, I, he's stuck on himself, be avenged of my enemies. He didn't do very much fighting, Jonathan did it. So none of the people tasted any food. Well, that's interesting because they obey. It's a stupid order, but they obey. And all they of the land, Jewish people, came to the wood, that we call it woods. It's one area of wood. Now there's multiple woods, it would be woods. Nothing wrong with the, the language of the King James Bible, it's more correct than what we have today. And there was honey upon the ground. Not in the tree, on the ground. And when the people were come into the wood, Behold, the honey dropped. Temptation. But no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. He wasn't there. He didn't hear it. Wherever it was, he didn't hear his father's mouth. Wherefore, he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, carrying a rod, like a cane, and dipped it in honey comb, and put his hand to his mouth. So he takes this end of his rod, sticks it in the honey, pulls it up, and puts some in his hand, and he's got it in his mouth now. Honey's good. And his eyes were enlightened. You know, this is how hungry they were. Oh, honey. It may not be a steak meal, but it's enough to satisfy me right now. And honey's not much. Honey's not much at all. And Saul said any food. So honey in the Bible is food. We'll keep reading. Then answered one of the people and said, Thy father straightly charged the people. There's an order. He's a military leader. He's charged the people. And this guy is going to tell Jonathan what happened. What Jonathan moved. There was an oath saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint because they had no food. They're hungry. Jonathan didn't hear the orders. And one of the soldiers steps up to him and says, Excuse me, sir. Jonathan, did you hear what your father said? What? Is anybody that eats any food, you're going to be cursed. Then said Jonathan, My father has troubled the land. See? Now he's speaking ill of his father, and he's speaking ill of the government, the king. But he's not doing out of disrespect, but still. I pray you, how my eyes have been enlightened, because I tasted a little of this honey. Listen, guy, sir, whatever. If we just had a little bit of food, man, our, our spirit would come back in us. Our, our souls would be re revived. We would be, uh, you know, a little less, 
a little less pain, a little less feigning. They are in a fast. It's the wrong time to fast. How much more if happily the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemy, which they found. And we say right there, we conquered the Philistines. And when with the Philistines, we found corn, we found wheat, we found bread, we found all kinds of food and armor and whatever. But we're talking about food. And Saul has adjured, has put the people to, no, we're not eating any of that food. Not because it's Gentile food. Not because it's against the law, but I may be avenged. Everybody's going to suffer because of me. And Jonathan says, hey, a little bit of honey made me feel good. Imagine what we could have done. We could have had that bread. We could have had those steaks. And whatever, you know, the meat, which we're going to see in a moment. Has troubled the land. See, I pray thee how my eyes have been enlightened because I taste a little of this honey. A little bit of honey. How much more, if happily, the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of the enemies which they found. So much more. And they're running out of strength. For had there not been now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines, we could have had a complete and most victory, a greatest victory, but we got no strength because we're fasting. That don't make sense. We can't go into battle right now because we're tired. We're sore. We're hungry. And it's got to be a long time so far because you don't faint after an hour of not having a meal. You don't faint after you get unable to have breakfast and lunch. But when you are in battle and all your, your strength has been used in battle, I would assume that breakfast, lunch, and dinner has not been able to be eaten and has been skipped because of saw. And by the time you're getting to near 6 p.m. and you've been hand-to-hand -hand combat, you're getting hungry. You need a meal. I mean, even the mil U.S. military and Vietnam and Korea and World War II, they give you a, a, a box of raisins or the iron. They would give you protein. Crackers. Saul says nothing. Not anything. And they smoked the Philistines that day from Michmash to Agilon. And the people were very faint. It's not just a fast of not having food. Our strength is gone. So they go into another battle. And they get victory. And they're hungry. And they're tired. And they're probably so angry at Saul. Verse 32. And the people flew. That's the first time that word shows up. Flew. How does a person fly without an airplane? Now watch. They flew upon the spoil. Uh, I'm going to say, and I don't know, I wasn't there, but here's a tent. Or a bag that has bread and food in it. Those Israelites are running and jumping into that. With their mouths and their hands open. I don't care if that bowl bread is moldy. I don't care if it's got bugs. I don't care if, if it's hard. It's oh! And they're diving, flying. Upon the spoil. The spoil would be, like I said. Uh, spears, arrows, swords. Armor, money, food. That's what they're interested in. They haven't been eating. And they took sheep. No problem. Sheep is good. It's clean. And oxen. That's clean. And calves. Baby cows. Good. Those are all good. And slew them on the ground. Right there. where They, they are hacking these animals in pieces right now. And the people did eat with the blood. 
We got a problem now. Leviticus 3.17. Let's see what Saul has done to the people of Israel. Two verses. Leviticus 3.17. He's caused them to sin. In Leviticus 3.17, the law that Saul and the men are under, it shall be a perpetual statute forever for your generations throughout all your dwellings in the land. They're in the land. They're in Benjamin. You realize how far... Jerusalem, Benjamin is to the Philistine area that the Philistines are crossed all the way over. That eat neither fat nor blood. One more place, 1710. I guarantee they are eating blood and fat. Leviticus 1710. And this was said to Noah before the law. This is under the law. Deuteronomy 17.10 I mean, excuse me, Leviticus 17.10 And this is found in the book of Acts for the church. And Leviticus 17.10 A stronger warning. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel uh, Okay, now we're in trouble Or of the strangers No one's left out That sojourneth among you That eateth any manner of blood I will God speak it, Even set my face against that soul That eateth blood And will cut him off From among his people Saul put a curse on all the people. What is this curse that no man will eat? They're going to eat the blood and God says, I'm done with you guys. There's no loophole in the law to say, okay, you know, if your leader says don't eat to 6 p.m. And then once you get an animal, chow down. They are flying into bags of bread and they are flying into the animals with their swords, with their spears, with their knives, and they're cutting into those animals and they're taking chunks of that animal raw with the blood and the fat and they're eating. Because it's all stupidness. Yep. They slit the neck and then so put it upside down. So all the blood runs out. But I would assume they're so hungry flying upon the spoil like it is. I, I assume that they're eating those those animals then they're still alive, dying. Yeah, it says too. He made the point in 32, slew them on the ground. On the ground. And the people did eat them with the blood and the law. The law is the law. These men that did this, and it doesn't say everybody did it will die and go to hell. That's the law. And they told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against the Lord. So see, it, it was known. Common knowledge. In that they eat with the blood. And he said, Ye have transgressed. Yeah, what about you going to preach to us, buddy? Roll a great stone unto me this day. We say, what on earth is he doing? Is he trying to commit suicide? Nope. And Saul said, disperse. That's the first time that shows up. Disperse yourselves among the people. The people that told him what's going on. To get out there to the people. And say unto them, bring me hither every man his ox, every man his sheep, and slay them here. Well, they're still alive. And eat and sin not against the Lord. And eat with the blood. Some of them's too late. And all the people brought every man his ox with him that night, that night, and slew them there. So Saul built an altar. So he gets these rocks and he built himself a barbecue pit. 
And he's building himself an altar. He's trying to get into the priesthood again. He blew it. And he blew it again. And so built an altar unto the Lord. The same was the first altar that he built unto the Lord. When was that? Maybe when he was offering the animals. Back over here, it's in chapter 13, verse 8. And it tarries seven days according to the set time that Samuel appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from, uh, from him. Man, he didn't get these people anywhere around him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offering. And they offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt what would he have to have offer those burnt offerings on? His self-made altar. He had to build something there. He just didn't dig a fire pit. And Saul said, let us go down after the Philistines by night. In the middle of the night? Really? This guy is driving his troops crazy. And spoil them until the morning. Light. From 6 p.m. now, they're eating. And whatever time they say, okay, we're done, we're full, burp. <laughs> All right, now let's go into Philistines. Let's go spoil some more. No, I was going to say, yeah, no sleep now. All right, you're going to, there's a battle in verses 32, 31 and 32. They are tired. They are frustrated. They haven't eaten. They get so hungry, they fly upon the animals, probably alive again. What the blood? Now they're all eating. They've been to a Chinese buffet. They, they've eaten all to their heart's desire. Now, if you ever been to a buffet and eat all you can eat, what's the next thing you want to do? You want to go home and take a nap. When your belly's full, it's like nap time. And everybody's laying against the tree. They're laying out. Oh, that was great. Oh. And some of them sinned against the Lord. Some of them didn't. Oh, we got a full moon. Oh, here comes Saul. What are we? Everybody get up. We're going to spoil. Uh, my tummy hurts. My tummy hurt before the battle. Now my tummy hurts after the battle. As goes the morning light when the sun rises. And let us not leave a man of them. We're going to kill them all. And they said, do what service seemeth good to thee. <laughs> yeah, that's, that don't sound really, you know, do something good to thee. That didn't really sound like, yes, sir, let's go. Then said the priest, let us draw near hither unto God. <laughs> the priest stepped up. Here, let's can we get God's counsel on this one? Priests have seen that, Saul, you're not doing too good here. And Saul asked counsel of God. Shall I go down after the Philistines? Will I deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not that day. Uh-oh. God's not answering there's a problem in the camp. There's an Achan. Remember Achan with the cursed thing? God said, hey, Joshua, get off your knees. Get up. There's a cursed thing in the camp. Saul, so, I'm not answering you. Don't you dare go into, into battle because there's a cursed thing in the camp. We're back in Joshua now. And Saul said, Draw ye near hither, all the chief of the people, and know and see wherein this sin has been this day. There's a sin somewhere that God's not answering. We need to find this out. What's the problem? So, <laughs> it gets even better. For as the Lord liveth, there's another oath, which saved Israel. Okay, gives God the credit, give him that much. Though it be and though it be in Jonathan my son, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> right off the bat, Jonathan. 
he shall surely die. But there was not a man among the people that answered him. This guy's flipped out. <laughs> this guy's going crazy. And then said he unto all Israel, Be on one side. All right, you guys over here. And I and Jonathan, my son, will be on the other side. And the people said to Saul, Do what seemeth good unto thee. Therefore Saul said unto the Lord God of Israel, Give a perfect lot. But, but And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. All right, so there's a problem in the camp. I don't know if he recognizes Joshua, the book of Joshua. We need to find out what this problem is. So he takes all Israel except two men, him and his son. Everybody over here. Jonathan, come here. You stand by me. Now, whether they drew straws, the black ball, the straw, the short straw, I don't know. This is a life gamble. This is not going to Las Vegas and shooting your money away. This is God. There's a problem. We have divided the company. We need to know yay and nay. And how they did it, I don't know. And Jonathan and Saul, they are somehow get the black ball, the short straw, whatever, however it is. Now, remember, Jonathan did not hear that oath. Then said Saul unto the Lord God, give him perfect life. And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. That doesn't mean they ran away. You know, God said it's not them one of you two and Saul said cast lots between me and Jonathan my son isn't that the story in Joshua with Achib family by you know tribe by family by father by and Jonathan was taken and Saul said to Jonathan yeah this is the same thing back there with Achan Joshua did not know what Achan did wrong. Saul does not know what Jonathan has done. Ladies and gentlemen of America and England, history repeats itself. Joshua is not just an old book. Joshua has shown up in chapter 14 of Samuel. It's the story of Achan. It's a curse. God said, whoever touches that curse is a thing. Saul said, whoever eats any food is a curse. Now he took a wedge of gold, silver, and a garment. Jonathan took a little bit of honey in his hand. People, we have hospitals and police department and all have sinned and come to short of the glory of God because somebody took a fruit off a tree that God said not to. Eat of it. Tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him. He said, I did but taste a little honey, a little honey, with the end of my rod that was in my hand. And lo, what's the curse? I must die. Look at him. Now let's look at another aspect. There's a curse. God says, I'll curse the woman. I will curse the man. Because they sin. And the son says, Father, they're cursed. They cannot do anything. There is nothing that will appease you for them to be in our glory. I will go to, I must die. I must go down there and I must suffer and die that they may have life. That curse, death. And Samuel answered, God do so and more also. Nice father. And so, yeah, Saul answered, God do so more also. For thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. 31 verse 2. 1 Samuel 31, 2. 
Did Adam die that that day? No. 31 2. Look what God look how God answers this one. And the Philistines followed hard at, upon Saul and upon his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Melchishiah, Saul's sons. And then later on, verse 5, and when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, Saul killed himself, verse 4. God slayed his sons before Saul slayed himself. If Jonathan was not there, we'll get that if we go through 1 Samuel with David. Had there's one part that he meets with David and he says, you know, he says, you're going to have the kingdom. I'm going to be the second part of the kingdom. And then he takes off and goes back to his father. If he didn't follow his father, if he would have stayed with David, he would have been still alive. But he had to go to his son. No, uh, I can't forget what his name is now. Jonathan's son. So the curse for Saul is he watches his sons die in battle. How does he handle it? Armor bearer, come over here and slay me. He takes his own sword. Slays him. And the people said unto Saul, watch this, shall Jonathan die? Whoa. Who has wrought this great salvation in Israel? They're rising up in, over the authority here. God forbid as the Lord liveth, there's an oath, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he has wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. But he was cursed. He didn't know, still he will die so the people rescued Jonathan what does that mean Saul would have killed him right then and there maybe Saul would stepped up with the sword or that spirit he's got maybe he went to go thrush into Jonathan and that rescue means the people start to know you're not doing this and push them aside and say hey he's brought victory in us that's a stupid order you gave. How many people are, are, are out of the will of God now by eating that blood because of you? And you're going to kill this? We are in victory because of Jonathan. They rescued Jonathan. That rescue means there's trouble and he, they took him out. Then Saul went up from following the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. He gave up on the battle. I thought they were going to go to battle. After that, man, he got so he got mad at his troops. Like, okay, fine, just go home then. He got upset that his son didn't die. Ain't that? So Saul took the kingdom over Israel. And fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, but doesn't get complete victory. Against the children of Ammon, doesn't get complete victory. That's Lot's children right there. Against Edom, that's Esau. Against the kings of Zoprah, against the Philistines. And whithersoever he turned himself, he vexed them. But it didn't get complete victory. And he gathered in host and smoked the Milikites. Those are the ones that came up and attacked Israel when they were in the journey with Moses. And God said, I'm going to wipe that guy out. But he didn't get complete victory. And delivered Israel out of the hands of them that spoiled them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, Ishii, Malchua, and the name of his two daughters were these. The name of the firstborn, Merab, and the name of the younger, Michael. 
And the name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimenaz. And the name of the captain of his host was Abner. That's important. You're going to see that name. The, so, uh, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. You know what? That's the same uncle would say, hey, what did Samuel say to you? The, and Kish was father of Saul. And Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Eel. And there was sore war against the Philistines all the days of Saul. And he's also an enemy of David. And when Saul saw any strong man of any valiant man, he took him unto him. Chapter 8, verse 10. And we'll close. 8, 10. So Saul had a draft. And he didn't send letters out in the mail. He said, hey, that's a strong man over there. Come over here. You're mine. When he seen David, is that what he did to David? Then he sent a letter back to Jesse. He ain't coming home no more. He's mine. First Samuel eight ten. And Samuel prophesied to Israel, and Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, "This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you." He will take your sons and appoint them for himself. There it is right there. For his chariots, for his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. The draft. And he will appoint him captains over a thousand, captains over fifty, and will set them ear to ground. And that's army. The verses 11 and 12 is a military draft. And that's the close of 1 Samuel chapter 14 they are getting what they want and so far every time Saul comes up to battle they are scared or they're not on his side now if God was in charge it'd be a whole different story 